Today I'm going to do a quick comparison between Time Bolt and Recut, two pieces of software that basically just cut out all the silent parts in your video to make editing 100 times faster. Hopefully this video will help you decide which piece of software might be best for you so that you don't have to go and download each one yourself and test them out. So let's jump onto my computer and we'll go through it. All right, so here we are with the programs and the way I'm gonna go through this is first by talking a bit about the differences in user interface. Then I'll talk about the similar features in each program, the differences. Lastly, we'll talk about the pricing and then finally I'll give you my thoughts and recommendations on which program might be best for you. So first of all, this is what you see when you first open up each program. So let's just go ahead and open our video file. I've got a graded clip here, which is just an A-roll talking clip. Let's just open that up. And as you can see, it takes a few seconds to strip the audio and analyze it for all the uh, different silent parts. And there you go, it's done, it's good to go. So. Let's move over to here. So let's just do the same file again. And as you can see, it takes a little bit of time again as well, but it's a bit quicker in Recut for it to analyze the audio. The other big thing that you probably notice straight off the bat is that Recut will show you the entire timeline of your clip, whereas Time Bolt doesn't show you the entire timeline. But just going back to the general UI, Recut is pretty simple. It gives you the timeline at the bottom, your preview window here, and then your different uh, silent settings on the right hand side. We've also got this sections tab and then an export tab. So it's all fairly straightforward. In Time Bolt, it's a little bit more complicated. It's still a relatively simple layout, but if you just scroll down and here you've got your silence options, then you've got some rendering enhancements, rendering options, and then render queue. So that's kind of your export section in Recut over here. So in terms of overall UI, I would probably say I kind of prefer the UI in Recut just because it's a bit more streamlined and simple and kind of easy to understand. So moving on to the features, and I won't go through all the features of each program, but I kind of talk about the ones that I use the most that each program has in common. So obviously the first one is that they take out the silent parts of your video. So here in Recut, if we just hit play, it's already taken out a bunch of silent segments. And down here we can see the total duration of the video was 27 minutes and then it was cut down to 12 minutes 46. So it's cut it down quite extensively. And if we hit the space bar, it will start to play back my footage. So you can get a preview of what the export will look like when you've exported the file from Rika. Same deal in Time Bolt, you can hit spacebar and that will start giving you a preview of the different cuts that it's made. And as you can see, they're pretty similar pretty similar cuts to the cuts that um, Recut has made. So anyway, going back to the different features, here we've got the threshold, the minimum duration, and the padding, as well as remove short blips. And the good thing about Recut is that they all give you these little explanations, which are pretty easy to understand. In Time Bolt, we've got basically the same settings here. So we've got um, the threshold, this one is in dB, which I kind of like, it gives you the dB threshold, whereas in Recut, it's just got this number. I'm not quite sure what the number represents, but I like that it's actually got an auto option, so you can select that, and that will automatically work out where the silent parts are. Then they've, again, got, both got padding. And again, I like in Recut that it gives you an explanation of what padding is, whereas I noticed in Time Bolt, it doesn't really give you explanations. It has these little question marks, the pop-up videos and you have to watch the video, which is kind of annoying. I'd rather just be able to read like this. This is a space between cuts, so that makes sense. Now, the other thing to note is that in time, but when you make a change, so if we want to remove silences longer than say 0.3 seconds, what you have to do is you have to update the silence detection. So you click this and then it will re-analyze the audio and then you'll have the updates made to the timeline. It doesn't take heaps of time, but it does take a little bit of extra time. Whereas in Recut, it does it in real time and you can see what's happening on the timeline. So if we want to change the minimum duration, we just drag this and as you can see on the timeline, it automatically updates in real time to give you a preview of what's being cut and what's not being cut, which I personally really like. Now the other main similarity is really just the export and in Time Bolt, you've got two ways of outputting the file. You can either render it through Time Bolt, so it renders a new video file with the silent parts cut out, or you can export it as an XML. 
So it's got support for ADL, TSC Pro J, I'm not sure what that is, and then Final Cut XML, and then just a regular XML. Obviously, I do Final Cut, so I'll just go export. So that's pretty easy, it's pretty straightforward. In ReCut, it's also pretty straightforward. Just go to the Export tab up here, and then again, you can export it as an MP4 or even as a WAV or M4A file. Select the resolution and export it. Now in both programs, I wouldn't really recommend exporting directly from this software because the render time is pretty slow. And chances are you're gonna want, want to make a whole bunch of edits to it anyway in your editing software. So in that case, we would go to the timeline. Again, you can select your different XML type. So you've got DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut, Premiere or regular XML. Then we just go export, select where you want to save it, hit save, and you've got your XML. You've also got the option to keep silent segments in if you want to. There is an option to do the same in Time Bolt. XML export, create splits, but don't delete selected silent. So if you do want to keep the silent sections in, you can do that in both programs. Now the last common feature I just wanted to touch on, which I should have mentioned earlier, is that you can delete sections within both programs. So if there's a section that you really don't want in your export, you can just select it and delete it like that. Same deal in ReCut. So we can actually zoom in on the timeline in ReCut, which is great. And then we just hit delete. And just like that, the whole section is deleted. Hit delete on my keyboard. And you can edit your timeline in these programs before exporting it to your NLE. All right, so that in a nutshell is basically where the similarities end. And as you can sort of see, that's most of ReCut. We've still got some features to talk about in TimeBolt and in ReCut. So let's talk a bit about the differences. So the first thing I'll talk about is the differences in ReCut. And there's really only one major one that I've used before. And that is the ability to add in a second layer of audio. For example, if you're recording through an external microphone like I do on a podcasting mic, so you just go to open and then I've got my audio here and that adds in an audio timeline down here. Now, if you want the video cuts to match the audio cuts, you just turn this one off. That will basically disable the cuts that are being made from this section here and it will take the cuts for the video and the audio from this audio timeline here. Now, the downside to recut is that it doesn't automatically sync the two sections. Potentially this feature might be added in the future, but for now you can't. So you have to manually match them up or sync them. And you just click this button here, segments, which turns your cursor into a clips movement and you can move the entire clip around. And again, just zoom in. And particularly if you've done like a clap or something at the start, it's pretty easy to match up. You can do it with a pretty high level of precision. Look at that. And there you go. And your exported file will include the video and audio from these two separate files. So that's a really cool thing about ReCut. Now, moving on to TimeBolt, I don't believe it's got the ability to do both an audio and a video file. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think it does have that ability, but it does have some other features. It's got an arm check, so this will get rid of filler words using a transcription service. Now this is pay per use, so it's not included even if you have the paid version of TimeBolt, but that could be something that you'd want to use if you want to save some extra time cutting out the arms yourself. It's also got some rendering enhancements. If there's silent parts in your video that you want to keep in but fast forward, you do have the option of doing that. You can adjust the rate at which they're sped up. You can adjust whether or not they're muted and the length of the cuts that you want to actually fast forward. So that's an option. Not 100% sure what you'd use that for. It's also got the option to apply transitions. So if you are rendering the file, which again, I don't really recommend because it takes a long time, but if you do want to apply transitions and render your whole video file here, you can actually put um, a whole bunch of different crossfades and wipes and things as transitions between your different cuts. So that's an option as well. And then lastly, you've got looping background music. So you could add in an audio file that you want to loop as background music, select the volume, and this will come out in your render. So as you can see, both programs are fairly similar. Time Belt does have some more features than ReCut does, but let's talk a bit about the pricing of each. So Time Belt has a free version, but you can only render files, you can't export XMLs, and the, all the render files will have watermarks on them. Then from there, it's got a monthly subscription, which is 17 US dollars a month. Then it's also got a yearly subscription, which is $97 a month, or it's got a lifetime option, which is $247, which gives you lifetime access, including updates, I believe, to Time Bolt. Now talking about ReCut, it's got a trial version, which is fully featured, so it's got no restrictions, but you just limit 
limited to five exports. And that's what I started on. Then after that, they've only got one purchase option, which is a lifetime subscription. And again, this includes all updates in the future. And it is $99 full price. Or if you use my link in the description, it's $89, you get $10 off. So I would say it is quite a bit cheaper than Time Bolt. So last of all, let's finally talk about which one I recommend, which one I use. And if that wasn't already kind of clear, I use ReCut. I've used ReCut for probably a good two years now. And honestly, I reckon it saved me hundreds of hours now. And the reason I prefer it, even though it's actually got less features than Time Bolt, is because a, it's cheaper, but B, mainly because the user interface is just easier to use. It's more straightforward. It's more streamlined, I think, than Time Bolt. And it's got less features that I just don't really need to use. Now, you might still prefer Time Bolt depending on your use case, but I think for most people, particularly video content creators like myself, if you're using it for talking head A-roll videos like this, then ReCut does an awesome job. And like I said, I genuinely have used this myself for about two years. Now, like I mentioned, links to both programs are in the description. They are affiliate links. However, I've said in my previous recut videos, I honestly would still make these videos and recommend recut even if they didn't have affiliate programs because I genuinely think recut is an awesome program. But before you go and buy any software, make sure you check out this video here where I give you even more ways to speed up your editing workflow. Other than that, I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you very soon in the next video.